It's okay. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It happens to everybody at some point. It's perfectly natural. I'm talking about gimbal lock, of course. Not sure what you had in mind. So if you don't know what a gimbal is, today is your lucky day because I'm about to tell you. A gimbal is a suspended support that can rotate around an axis. Most commonly, it's a ring. This Euler gimbal is the one that you're probably most familiar with if you're in the 3D animation realm, which we use for rotating objects and has gimbals nested inside one another and a particular hierarchy. Each ring can pivot around an axis so that the entire gimbal system can rotate on multiple axes. Gimbal lock is when two of these rings have been rotated in such a way that they both align and start to rotate along the same axis. So in 3D animation, that means some whack shit is bound to happen in your rotations and interpolations because the software is trying to interpret how to get around the issue. The thing is that it's really important for you as the animator or as the rigger to pay attention to the hierarchy of the rotation order of these gimbals to avoid the dreaded gimbal lock. The hierarchy is that the outermost ring is the parent, the middle ring is the outer ring's child, and the innermost ring is the child of the middle ring. So you see that the innermost ring can rotate independently, but is also affected by the rotations of the two outer rings. The middle ring, when rotated, will also rotate the innermost ring, and the outer ring, when rotated, will rotate all three rings. Now, you might be wondering where Euler rotation comes into all of this. This dude, Leonard Euler, was a mathematician, physicist, astronomer, all-round overachiever. I'm sorry, I mean genius. And he figured out this rotation theorem which is that when you have a rotation system in 3D space, it has these axes, the X, Y, and Z axes that rotate around a fixed origin point. So the gimbal is the axis system used for performing Euler rotations, and hence why this is an Euler gimbal. Now, there are different Euler rotation modes in your gimbal, which depend on the hierarchy I mentioned earlier. We have six possible modes or hierarchy combinations according to the axes we have to work with. X, Y, Z, X, Z, Y, Y, X, Z, YZX, ZXY, and ZYX Euler rotation modes. These are named for the axes in order of the hierarchy they're in, starting at the bottom of the hierarchy and ending with the axis that's at the top of the hierarchy. So for example, in this one, XZY, X is at the bottom of the hierarchy, Z is in the middle, and Y is at the top of the hierarchy. The big cheese of the axes in this rotation order. You can see how easily you can get into the situation of gimbal lock. So I have this rotation manipulator here, right? And I'm going to change the transform orientations from local to gimbal. You might wonder why I don't just leave it at local, since when I'm in local and I rotate the manipulator, the X, Y, and Z axes seem to stay equidistant. So it stands to reason I wouldn't experience gimbal lock, right? Unfortunately, that is just a visual representation, and the software still calculates with Euler rotations. So gimbal lock would still occur. So it's better to have it set to gimbal so you can actually see what is really going on. So I change it to gimbal so that it'll get an accurate representation of the axes. And if I go to my object properties, I can see that it's set to X, Y, Z, Euler. So X is at the bottom of the hierarchy. It's parented to Y and Y is parented to Z. Z is at the top of the hierarchy. If I grab Y, the green one, which is the middle axis here in this gimbal that's set to X, Y, Z, Euler and rotate it, you can see straight away I've become gimbal locked because X is a child of Y. So when I rotated Y, X rotated as well. And now X and Z are aligned and rotate on the same axis. So we've now lost the ability to use one of those axes and I'm basically stuck with two now because these two are rotating on the same axis. So if I was doing that to a character's arm and keyframed it there, my 3D software, Blender in this case, would try to figure out what the hell I did and fix it for me with some weird interpolation. So now we hopefully understand what gimbal lock is, but how do we fix it? Or even better, avoid it, because prevention is better than cure. Well, gimbal lock occurs in any Euler rotation system, no matter what the parenting hierarchy is, whether it's XYZ, ZXY, YZX, or any of the other possible combinations. Because of the parenting, when you rotate the middle ring, whichever is the middle of the hierarchy, to 90 degrees, the lock is gonna happen. So we need to be deliberate in what rotation order we decide to use when animating. If the middle axis in the rotation order is what causes gimbal lock when it rotates to either negative or positive 90 degrees, then we need to try and make sure that whatever rotation order we're using would use that axis the least and that if we do need to use it it won't need to be rotated to 90 degrees. 
So let's look at it this way. We have this gimbal, and instead of using X, Y, and Z as our axes here, because it depends on the rotation order, and you could be using any rotation order, let's rather use A, B, and C, because those letters can apply to whichever axis you want in this situation. So remember I said that the rotation order starts with what is at the bottom of the hierarchy and ends with what's at the top, the master axis. So that means that C is the master axis. If C moves, so do the others. And B is the middle axis, which is the problem child, if you will. Because when B rotates to 90 degrees, A rotates with it, and we get gimbal lock issues. And A is at the bottom of the hierarchy, so when A rotates by itself, that's fine, because nothing else is parented to A because it's at the bottom of the hierarchy. So it stands to reason you need to pick a rotation order where whatever is at C, whether it's X, Y, or Z, is the most important axis. The one you'll use the most. B is the one you should use the least, or try to avoid using completely if possible, or at least make sure it'll never be at 90 degrees, and whatever is at A is the second most used axis. Using this method and trying your best to plan ahead with what rotation order will most suit your purposes will save you a lot of headaches when animating, but obviously this isn't always going to be possible. You either won't know exactly how your object needs to rotate, or you do need freedom on all those axes. It'll save you a lot of headaches if you do plan ahead, but if you can't, there are ways around this. And no, one of those ways is not just changing the rotation order if you suddenly encounter gimbal lock while animating, because that's going to change your rotation order for everything you've already done. Check this out for example. I've animated this arrow, and this is how it animates, right? But now I've encountered gimbal lock, so I changed the rotation order. But now, every instruction it's been given before has also changed. Let's try it here, the exact same animation but with a different rotation order again. Yeah, that's not gonna cut it. So this is why it's important to know the best rotation order for your animation before you start animating, because it's not the best idea to change your mind halfway through. And what about quaternion rotation, you may ask? <laughs> Good luck with that. I'm kidding. You can actually work in Euler rotation, then bake your animation when you encounter gimbal lock, sort out the issue there with quaternion rotation, then bake that animation and switch back to Euler rotation. But it's not really recommended to work solely in quaternions. It's a lot more complex. You have to worry about the W value too, and quaternions don't operate in degrees like Euler's do. With quaternions, it also solves for shorter paths, so the interpolation might not end up being what you expect, and you'll have to go in and add more keyframes in between to get it to do what you actually expect it to do. And you also can't manipulate the curves in the graph editor the way you can with Euler rotation to get that really nice, smooth-looking animation with your curves. So that's the problem with quaternion rotations, and I wouldn't suggest that you try animating only with quaternions to try and get past the issue of gimbal lock. The other solution you could try if you have run into a gimbal lock is to go and manually key each frame to get around the gimbal lock issue, but only do that if you're a masochist and you hate yourself because, first of all, it's going to be super tedious. Second of all, it's actually not going to end up looking that great and you won't be able to manipulate the curves and get a really nice looking animation there. So I definitely wouldn't suggest that as a solution. There's also a discontinuity or Euler filter for your curves in Blender, which does work in some cases to fix weirdnesses and strange rotations that result from gimbal lock. You just need to go to your curve editor, then select the errant curve, go to key, then discontinuity Euler filter, and that may fix some of the issues you might be having. I have found that it doesn't work in all cases though. Another thing you could do is parent your object to an empty and use that empty as sort of a substitute for that middle problem axis in your gimbal and try to avoid gimbal lock in that way. But that can also get, you know, kind of confusing and complex to do as well while you're animating. So do yourself a favor and just try to understand rotation orders and try to plan out what you're going to be animating so that you know which rotation order is going to suit your purposes for your specific animation. That way you can make an informed decision on your rotation order and it's going to make your animation life a whole lot easier. So that's it for today. Tap the like button if you did like the video and to help with the algorithm that's always appreciated. Subscribe if you want to keep up to date with my other uploads. And thank you, as always, to my patrons over on Patreon. I greatly appreciate the support. Like I say every single time, it never gets any less true. I really, really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make another video going more in depth on the solutions of solving gimbal lock other than just, you know, plotting out your rotation order. So if you've encountered gimbal lock and you want to know how to solve it, because I did mention them in this video, and if you're an advanced Blender user, you'll probably be able to figure out just from what I said on what to do. But if you're not, and you're still lost at sea, 
I will throw out a life boy to you and I will make another video going more in depth for that. So just let me know and I will oblige. Love ya. Bye.